good morning children uh, welcome to economics class so in the last chapter we completed the eighth chapter in the last class we completed the eighth chapter where we learnt about the international uh, organizations and we learnt about uh, I, imf uh, international monetary fund then uh, uh, world bank then we learnt about the trade blocks next about uh, acn sarc brics world trade organizations which are all the international organizations which facilitate the uh, international trade we learnt about that their objectives their functions and their achievement we finished that lesson and uh, coming to the next topic next lesson is uh, fiscal economics fiscal economics the term fiscal economics and you see it is an op uh, it is a very old and popular term it is a subject of fiscal public finance before that i need to tell you what is public finance whatever the finance activities which are undertaken by the government refers to the public finance okay whatever the activities which monetary activities which in which is done by the government is termed as public finance the term fiscal is derived from the greek word which means basket okay basket or pub common purse or public purse so money is being spent from that common pocket that is the government treasury how it is being spent and the various subjects which are involved in the spending of the government money accumulation of money the various ways of spending the money various ways of raising the loans to meet out the expenditure all those are covered under fiscal economy makes and before going to that this lesson will be learning about what is the meaning of uh, public finance what are the subject matters which are involved in public finance and will be uh, uh, understanding about the what are the ways of raising revenue one of the biggest way of raising government revenue is through taxes what are the types of taxes under that will be learning about direct tax indirect tax the various sources of taxes and what are the functions of the finance commission and uh, uh, these topics will be covering under this particular lesson and uh, there is a small uh, couplet thirukural couplet given incomings may be scant but yet no failures there if in expenditure you rightly learn to spare okay this is the thirukural of uh, 478 the original kural is many of you should be knowing or for those who do not know it okay i shall just tell you ஆகார அளவிட்டி தாயினும் கேடில்லை போகாறு அளவிலா கடை திஸ் இஸ் த கப்லெட் விச் ரெஃபர்ஸ் திருக்குறள் விச் ரெஃபர்ஸ் டு ஃபோர் செவன்டி எயிட் விச் மீன்ஸ் தோ யுவர் இன்கம் இஸ் வெரி ஸ்மால் ஓகே இட் வில் நாட் ரூ யூன் யுவர் ஃபேமிலி ஆர் இட் வில் நாட் ரூ இன் த கவர்மெண்ட் அன்லஸ் okay if the outgoing passage if the outgoing or the expenditure passage is very is not larger than your uh, what is it uh, uh, incoming passage or the uh, path okay to tell you very precisely if your income is 10000 a month okay it is not bad you can live with 10000 also you can manage your expenses suppose if your expense is less than 10000 it is not wrong okay you you will be able to lead okay a good life only you will not be ruined at all this is the essence of this uh, thirukural now why should they quote thirukural here because it the, this is also applicable to a country the amount of income or the revenue for the government might be very small but the expenditures that are being spent by, spent by the government should be less than the amount of income revenues that is being or the sources of revenue if that is a case a country will not collapse okay this is the essence of the uh, what is the thirukural actually when you speak about the modern uh, state okay the modern state is a welfare state see previously the role of the government in the olden days it was only uh, where the kings were ruling the country the king the, the role of the government was very very limited the government was taking care of collection of taxes with the collection of taxes the government was uh, getting ready the infrastructure that was needed for the people uh, in that country and apart from that law and order was in the hands of the government and when there is any offense okay, from from their enemies from their neighboring countries the government it is the role of the government to protect the country so these were the major roles of uh, functions performed by the government 
on the few decades here, a uh, few decades ago. But the modern state or the modern garment, the work of the modern garment has increased extensively and intensively. That means the functions performed by the garment has expanded a lot. What are they? What are what are the functions that are dealt by the garment will be saying will be seeing in the next page so we need to understand about what is the meaning of public finance public finance means what it is a study about what the financial aspects of the garment it learns about it is a study which deals with what whatever the financial aspect the garment deals with it is regulated to that only and apart from that it is concerned with the revenue of the garment whatever the revenue that the government receives or the expenditure that the government spends everything which is being spent by the public authorities how by adjusting one with the other of the if the expenditures are high you limit your expenditure to to equal to your revenues or else if your expenditures are high you increase your revenues to adjust that so with the adjustment of one with the other okay Public finance is concerned with what revenue and expenditure of whom of the public authority. How is how does how is it done by the adjustment of one with the other? Next, there is a definition given by Adam Smith. The definition given by Adam Smith is a little easy. You can learn that public finance is an investigation into the nature and principles of state revenue and expenditure. Very simple definition. What is public finance? It is an investigation. Okay, you just analyze, scrutinize very carefully. That is only investigation about what the nature and principles. Okay, the nature and principles of what the state revenue and expenditure. State here means does not uh, mean the real uh, twenty nine states. It means government. Okay, it includes it includes it is an investigation about what the government's revenue and expenditure. the nature of the garments revenue and expenditure and the principles on which the revenue is being made or or the or the expenditures are being made by the garment so this definition is given by whom adam smith now let us understand i told you what are the subjects which are involved in public finance when you look into the public finance there are major five headings which are included under public finance quite an important uh, answer it is a detail answer as well what are the five major subdivisions subdivisions of public finances first is public revenue public expenditure public debts financial administration and fiscal policy first let us understand what is public revenue when you talk of public revenue what are the various methods that the government does to raise the revenue okay how will a government get income revenue means income what are the various sources of income for the government basically it is tax only tax no non tax revenues are also there and not only that public revenue includes the methods of raising the revenue such as tax revenues non tax revenues apart from that the principles of taxation how the tax is being levied on what principles on what guidelines these taxes are being levied next what are the rates of taxes see the, the government cannot fix the same rate of tax for everyone as for the rich poor it cannot levy a same uh, rate of tax and apart from that what is the impact the incidence and shifting of taxes when this tax is being uh, imposed what is the impact that it has created in the society impact means the outcome that it has come out see once the gst was imp uh, implemented it led to so much of uh, impact in the society is it to different sectors of the society each one of them were affected in one way or the other and what is the incidence by levying this it causes this incidence where does it fall okay the tax where is it falling or whether the tax can be shifted from one person to other okay and what is the effect of that whether it is direct tax or indirect tax what is the effect of the taxation about all this will be learning under which heading public revenue next is public expenditure you know what is expenditure the uh, that is expenses which are being made this part studies the fundamental principles that is governing the government expenditure how the government is going to spend on what all headings the government is spending money is it a productive one or will it lead to welfare for the people okay so what are the effects of the public spending expenditure and where all the government can control the expenditure all those are dealt under public expenditure next is public debt 
debt means what kadan how much uh, see the expenses are when the expenses are on the higher side the revenues are on the lower side obviously the government have to borrow money from internal source and from external source to meet out their expenditure not only that <coughs> the amount of money that has been borrowed should also be repaid okay so what are the what uh, how much is a burden that the government is uh, levying on the people because of this borrowings okay whatever is the government borrowings is dealt under public debts and how are they going to repay the debts all those falls under public debt next is financial administration see financial administration it is uh, an important part which basically involves the aspects like public budget that is year after year the financial budget is being prepared by the finance minister okay the step what are the various steps in preparing the budget and uh, submitting the budget in the uh, uh, assembly and getting the sanction or where the rejections might be there okay and getting the approval and getting the allocations of funds for uh, different uh, projects after the allocation evaluation okay before that before allocation evaluating the project feasibility of the project and allocation of the money and seeing that the allocated funds are being utilized on the proper uh, uh, subject and after that auditing all those falls under the financial administration topic next is fiscal policy anything which is related to taxes subsidies all comes under fiscal policy okay and to how to control inflation using the fiscal policy measures all those are studied under fiscal policy that is taxes subsidy taxes varigal subsidy saligaigal okay public debts how much the government is borrowing public expenditure all these plays a major role in deciding the fiscal policy of the country also these are the five major subject matters which are dealt or the scope of public finance okay next let us go to let us understand what is public finance and private finance public finance it is a study of income expenditure the money that is being borrowed the financial administration whichever is done by the government is studied under public finance whatever the money that is being spent by the government or the exp- or the revenue that is raised by the government or the money that is being borrowed by the government and framing of the budget everything falls under public finance then what does private finance mean it is a, the same topic is only done okay uh, by the bu- private companies or the individuals that is the income the expenditure how much of money is being borrowed and how much of money is being lent what are the financial administration that is being done by the private enterprises or even the corporates okay what is the budget being levied or uh, amount of uh, the commodities that has to be produced or the amount what is the target for the next year all those which is pertaining to individuals or private companies are studied under the heading of private finance so when you see the operations might be very similar only okay but there are certain differences between both now let us understand the similarities between private finance and public finance under the heading of similarities and next we have got dissimilarities also how public finance is different from that of private finance will be learning under the heading of dissimilarities first let us learn about similarities how public finance is the same as private finance the first thing is rationality both public finance and private finance are based on rationality rationality means something which is based on logical thinking and reasoning okay this is a correct way of doing in tamil you call it as pagatharivu okay you uh, uh, see it if a particular project has to be done this is the right way of doing it is logical if this is being done this is the outcome so you and you put things in a logical manner and uh, give reasons for doing everything both public finance as well as private finance aim at law, rationality that is maximization of welfare if it is private maximization welfare of the entrepreneurs or the employees or the common public consumers who consume the goods and least cost of production in both the cases the objective will be similarity will be maximum welfare is objective and minimum cost is the objective okay this is common for both public finance and private finance next is limit to borrowings both can apply restrictions 
with regarding to the borrowings the government also cannot borrow beyond a limit okay they cannot borrow beyond a limit what will happen when we borrow beyond a limit we will become captives of that particular country where wherever we have borrowed from there are there is a limit to deficit financing even to even if the government is showing a deficit financing that is expenditures are high than the revenues there is a limit for that also likewise it is the same with respect to individuals also next is resource utilization both public and private sectors they have limited resources only for their dispo at their disposal we don't have unlimited resources whether it can be money or it can be men material skilled people unskilled people everything is really limited so both of the sectors public as well as private they aim at utilizing this limited resources in an optimum manner optimum means what making the best use of something with limited cost with minimum cost is optimization next is administration see administration is also common both public finance and private finance requires a very good efficient administrative machinery okay machinery here i don't mean the plant and machinery they want effective management that is efficient effective management without any corruption if there is if they are inefficient and corrupted what will happen it will lead to wastages and losses it is common for both also if an if 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 if, if a business uh, if in a business there are five partners two partner is squindling the money he is uh, utilizing the business uh, money for his own use means who will be at loss the business will be will be at loss likewise if the politicians who are in the administrative position if they are corrupted so it is a loss for the government as such so these are the similarities between public finance and private finance this is a three mark question next is what are the dissimilarities when we look into the dissimilarities income expenditure adjustment please understand children here the government will adjust the income based on the expenditure see the government will uh, the when the budget is being prepared they will submit that these are the expenditures that have to be uh, done for the welfare of the people so this is the amount of money that should be spent so based on the expenditure they will change the they will adjust the government will adjust the revenue for the government how will they increase the income for the government by altering the various tax structures okay it is like okay they decide the number of uh, coats or uh, dress material that is needed then they buy the cloth okay you decide how many shirts have to be stitched then you decide how much of uh, length of cloth is needed for uh, that much number of shirts to be stitched La on the other hand in case of private uh, finance you adjust your expenditure to your income you know that this will be the income or this is the amount of capital that you have got with this amount of money you need to plan your expenditure you have to limit your expenditure within that uh, uh, limitation of money availability so here the example what i gave you here the stitching the uh, deciding the cloth based on the number of dresses is government does it but here whereas in case of uh, private sector you have a cloth given to you you have to decide this is the length of the cloth given to you you should decide how many dresses can be stitched in that okay effectively without wasting the cloth this is a situation of private uh, finance next is borrowing see the government can borrow from internal source from external source also okay by issuing bonds to the people the government can raise money and people also will be ready to invest in government bonds and securities but whereas if it is an individual his borrowing capacity is very very limited next is right to print currency see when there is a low money supply in the country okay when <clears throat> in such a situation to increase the economic activity or to increase the revenue the government can adopt or can opt for printing of new currencies or printing of the existing denomination of currency thereby it can create distribute monitor the currency okay but whereas this is not possible in case of private sector can a private entrepreneur create currency new currency or uh, print new currency it is not possible it is a act of uh, fraudulence or forgery 
Next is present and future decisions. The public finance is more involved with future planning and making long term decisions. The government, whatever the decisions that are made by the government are absolutely based on long term benefits only. A bridge is being constructed. Is the bridge useful only for 4 years or 5 years? Definitely no. It, is, it will stay for hundreds of years. Likewise, a dam is being constructed. It is again a public expenditure. And, but the utility of the uh, dam will be last for decades or even for centuries rather. So like that, the present de the decisions are based on long term uh, benefits only. But whereas in the case of uh, private finance, they take financial decisions on projects on a short term vision. Okay. Next is objectives. What is the basic objective of public sector? Social welfare. To whatever they do, the government does, should be worked for the benefit of the society. But whereas private sector, it aims at maximum personal benefit. Okay, you have to, they aim at profit making for the individuals who invest their money. Next is coercion to get uh, revenue. Coercion means... Mm. An act of uh, forcefulness to do something. The, the, see, uh, to get revenue. For, uh, see, the government re needs revenue uh, to run various, uh, to meet out various public expenditure. So, the main source of revenue for the government is taxes. So, the government can forcefully ask the people to pay the taxes on time. Otherwise, the government can levy penal fine also for late payment or for non-payment also. So, an act of coercion, coercion is there. Coercion means what? In Tamil, you say varpurutal. The government can force the people to pay the tax. Otherwise, they can, discon they can uh, disconnect the uh, services which are given by the government. See, suppose if you are not paying water tax, what will happen? The government will disconnect the water uh, supply to your house. If you don't pay the electricity tax, the government will disconnect the electricity, electricity supply to your house. So, an act of coercion could be made for raising the income. This is with respect to government, but this can, is this not possible? in case of private sector because the government uses its power and authority. Likewise, private sector, there is no act of coercion involved in raising the income. Next is ability to make huge and deliberate changes. See, the government has got the ability to take very big decisions, okay, which involves deliberate decisions. That is, massive decisions can be taken which affects the whole structure of the country itself. See, very simple, recently, See, denom devaluation, it is one of the biggest decision taken, okay, and separation of, uh, what is it, uh, uh, Kashmir, okay, uh, declaring Kashmir as a union territory, one of the biggest decision that could be taken. So, the government can take big decisions on incomes. Because by, by making Union uh, Kashmir, Jammu and Kashmir as union territory, there will definitely be changes in the income pattern or the tax structures of the government. So, who can take all such big massive decisions? The government can take big massive decisions with respect to uh, the revenues of the government. So, individuals cannot take such big bold decisions. So, these are the dissimilarities of public finance from private finance. Next is what are the functions of the modern state? When you look into the functions of the modern state, see children, if you want, you can just put a pause, okay, then rewind the topic and then you can take. Because since it is a one-way communication, I keep continuously talking to you, okay. So, if you want, if you feel that you need to take a break, put a pause here, okay. Then understand whatever I have taught and then uh, start the button and listen to the remaining part of the video. Next is, what are the functions of modern state? Modern state performs various functions. I told you previously the government's function was to take care of the, protect the country and to, when the law, taking care of law and order and uh, levying taxes were the primary functions of the old government, that is traditional government. But now, the role of the government is very, very important. It is responsible for creating economic and social overheads. It has to ensure that there should be stability, there should be the resources should be very conservatively utilized. Okay, and there should all the steps that the government makes should be towards the development only. That let us see one after the other. This is again a three mark question or five mark question. Okay. 
Next is defense. The primary function of government is what? To protect the people from external uh, aggressions. See, China is waging, is ready to wage a war. Who is going and uh, placing the warriors in front of, in uh, Ladakh, in LOC, in, in the place of Ladakh? It is a government only. Government only takes care of the defense of the country and maintaining of peace and security is one of the primary function of the government of, or the modern state for which huge amount of money should be spent for maintenance of the military expenditures. So, and for protection expenditures and for creation or for uh, uh, preparing whatever the arms and ammunitions requiring to protect our country requires huge amount of money because modern wars are very, very expensive. Okay, nowadays, okay, or nuclear wars, bio wars, everything is there. All those are very, very expensive. The bio war, what we are facing now, how much has it costed to our lives? We, it is unimaginable, is it? What is the bio war I am talking about? The COVID-19. Okay, it is a bio war which is being waged by China to the rest of the world. Okay, so which is very, very costly. So huge amount of our money is by being spent for what? Fighting this war only by protecting ourselves. It is not that literally we go and uh, fight with sword and guns or uh, bombs. Here we are fighting against the uh, virus. That is also a type of war where it requires huge amount of money also. Next is judiciary. Rendering service and settling the disputes okay, is one of the important function of modern state. See the judiciary has to, the, the government has to face the judicial, uh, has to frame the judicial structures in such a way that Justice is common for all the people. There should not be uh, biasness with respect to the justice that is given to people. Next is enterprise. See, we have private enterprises, public enterprises. The government acts as a body to control the private sector as well as the public sector. The, everywhere, the interest of the public should not be disturbed. The ownership can be private sectors or the ownership can be of the government also but it is the responsibility of the government to bring various acts to see that both are functioning uh, mutually uh, in a coercive manner. Next is social welfare. When we talk of social welfare the governments it is the duty of the state to provide education to provide social security for people, provide insurance for the people, good sanitary condition and better living condition for the people. That comes under social welfare. Underline these points. Next is infrastructure. It is a duty of the government to provide good infrastructure for the people. Okay, provide proper roads, I'm, I'm, uh, what is it, uh, bridges, dams. Okay, Pro social welfare. That is social infrastructure refers to Okay, uh, that is uh, peaceful places for uh, uh, people, old age people and for destitutes, the governments have to create, have to maintain a separate place for the uh, uh, old people who are, who are left out from their families or for the beggars or bringing rehabilitation for people who are affected because of different types of illness. All those refers to social infrastructure. Next is macroeconomic policy. The government has to administer Fiscal policy, monetary policy. For what? To achieve all the macroeconomic objectives. What are macroeconomic objectives? To reduce poverty, to increase unemployment opportunities, okay, to see that uh, inequalities are reduced. All these are macroeconomic policies. So it is the role of the government to take care of, to uh, formulate fiscal policy and monetary policy to achieve our objectives. Next is social justice. Social justice again, one person should not tax the other person and live gain benefit at the cost of the society. That is also one of the main job of the government to see that few sections in the society do not gain profit by taxing few people in the society. See many a times you, you, have, you, have, you might have seen in almost recently all the types of movies. You could see that big, big factories are being built by damaging or by acquiring, uh, uh, by uh, forcefully acquiring the agricultural lands. Like uh, in many movies, in recently, uh, almost all the movies are centered with this uh, sort of approach only. So agricultural pastoral lands, whichever is not cultivated by the farmers because of uh, lack of uh, funds reason, uh, huge entrepreneurs or corporates they want they forcefully get them uh, get the land from the people and they uh, benefit 
on a huge basis at the cost of these poor people so the it is the role of the government okay to intervene with fiscal measures and redistribute the income that is uh, rich people it should see that uh, the the gap between the rich people and the poor people are reduced next is it has to control the monopoly also monopoly means concentration of economic power in the hands of few people okay uh, economic power means what see basically who rules the society either the rich person rules the society or the politicians rule the society many a times what happens the rich people only uh, become the politicians or sometimes they become politicians and then they become rich so invariably the economically powerful people start dictating the terms for the uh, society as such so the government should intervene intervene means what should come and uh, settle the issues <clears throat> it should intervene and come out with policies like uh, to control the monopolies the mrtp act the monopoly restrictive trade practices act so bring out proper uh, acts and uh, laws to reduce or curb the concentration of economic power curb means what put an end to restrict how the government can uh, curb the concentration of economic power first thing is the government itself should produce certain goods and services okay by doing that the private entrepreneurs or private corporates will not suppress the poor people so the government has to take up the production activities by itself next is a supply of public goods and services now not only production the government also should take the work of supplying the goods to the needy people see if the government is doing the supplies that is why we have the separate department called as civil supplies department where the government distributes whatever is essentials to the people directly by providing what card the ration card okay or the smart card next is as a regulator of the system finally the government should take up the work of regulating the system of demand and supply conditions and see that the price does not increase uh, high when the price increases what happens inflation will come into existence when inflation is there poor people will be getting affected so these are the that is uh, functions of modern state a small recap of today's topics first what did we saw we saw a small curricular couplet about what is fiscal economics then uh, we learnt about the meaning of economics the definition given by adam smith then what are the subject matters which are involved in public finance under that we saw public revenue as a subject matter public expenditure public debt financial administration and fiscal policy this is a five mark question and the definition of public finance it is a two mark question next is what is the difference between private finance and public finance private finance is a finance is a study of income expenditure administ financial administration of private individuals if the same thing is done by the government it is public finance and we saw the similarities similarities again it is a three mark question rationality rationality means what i told you in tamil pagatharivu so both are based on logical reasoning <coughs> next is limiting of borrowings both of them have got limitations to borrow money from uh, any sources next is resource utilization both public finance and private finance have got very limited amount of resources they have to utilize this rem- limited resources to the optimum level of uh, uh, utilization next is administration when we talk of administration both of them depends upon a efficient administrative machinery if 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 the if the administration is ineffective or corrupted it will lead to wastages and what losses next is what are the similar dissimilarities how this is different from the other income and expenditure adjustment the government will adjust the revenue for based on expenditure whereas private will adjust the expenditure based on the revenue next is borrowing both of them government has got both internal source external source but the individual does not have that much source of uh, borrowings next is future decisions present versus future decision public finance always aims at a long term uh, vision whereas private finance has got a short term vision objective of public finance public finance is what social welfare but whereas private sector their aim is what personal welfare 
Next is coercion to get revenue. The government can adopt any forceful means to get the revenue collected. This is not possible in case of private finance. The government can take huge and deliberate decisions. It is not possible for the private sector. Next is functions of modern state. First is to protect the country. Next is law and order. Next is controlling of the enterprises, whether it is private sector or public sector and maintaining insurance, uh, security, education, health, sanitation, that is social welfare. But developing the infrastructure which is required for the society. Next is uh, play uh, that is administering all the macroeconomic objectives, framing the fiscal policy and monetary policies. Then social justice that is the certain sections of the society should not be affected by few of the rich class of the society. Then controlling the monopolies either by producing the goods by itself or by distributing the goods by itself or by putting a regulatory system to see that price doesn't increase. So with this we are, uh, we are finishing the lesson. The homework for you will be what when whatever I have uh, taught today only I am going to give you homework. This is second children. This is quite a big lesson. The homework for you will be question number uh, 21. Question number 30. Question number 31. Okay. Question number 21, 30, 31. That's all. Okay. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.